good. Good to go? Okay. Uh, good evening. This is the uh, PMBC meeting for September the 23rd. Uh, we're going to call the meeting to order. Uh, we don't have a warrant. Um, so the next order of business is to approve the amended me meeting minutes of September 9th. Uh, hopefully everyone's had a chance to look at those. And do we have a motion to uh, accept as amended? I'll, I'll make a motion. Oh. Okay. Good. Okay. We. I'll uh, make a motion to accept the minutes from September 9th. Is that what you said? Yeah, September we have. Ninth? We have to do a roll call vote. So you okay. say your name first, and then say make a motion. I'll second. Oh, oh Timolin Rossius, I motion to accept the minutes from September 9th as amended. Bob Romley, I'll second it. All in favor? Bob Romley, yes. Yes. Timlin Ross, yes, yes. Rich Crowley, yes. Steve Moore, yes. And Bartlett ha Harvey wasn't there, so I guess he doesn't vote for that. I don't vote on that, no. Correct. All right. Um, moving on to the library. Brian, do you want to give us an update? Sure. Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, library, we are full steam ahead right now. We're, uh, we're on schedule to have our steel within the next couple of weeks, the first sequence being delivered onto the site. Uh, if you've been by the site at any point uh, in the past week, we've completed our foundation pour, our concrete pours. Uh, all the, the strength and concrete testing has been ongoing as well. Uh, the mason has been on site, has been building the elevator shaft, uh, in the middle of the footprint of the building this week. That went up very quickly, uh, as well as the retaining walls around the back side of the building. Uh, we're coordinating with Littleton Light and Littleton Water um, with the electric and water scopes up on Shattuck Street. Uh, we've, con we've coordinated with Town Hall about a shutdown of the water to Town Hall next Wednesday, the 30th. Um, we're hoping to keep that shut down to a minimum. Uh, we've coordinated with Littleton Water, who needs to shut it down anyways to do a replacement on a hydrant. Uh, so the site contractor and Commodore have been able to uh, accommodate that and get their work done at the same time so that we can um, uh, minimize any impact to any of the neighbors, especially Town Hall. Um, we received a, a document today from the project manager of Commodore uh, that buyout is ongoing. Currently right now they've, they've saved about 40,000 in savings. There's a couple larger subcontracts that are still to be bought out, including the drywall and the siding. Um, the little insider information I have is that they're trying to use one company for both of the scopes, which will uh, hopefully um, produce a, a larger credit on the biome. So things are going well there. Um, we'll have our architect on site tomorrow uh, to go over some of the electrical scope uh, that we did with Littleton Light, uh, where we're hoping to remove some of the electrical scope out on Shattuck Street, also um, resulting in a, in a credit uh, from the electrical contractor. Um, so uh, things are going well. We're, uh, we we want to be we want to be uh, up and constructed and getting our, our building water tight, um, hopefully in the next couple months so that we, we can avoid any winter conditions. All right. Any questions? Any unknown conditions pop up? At this time, uh, right now, Rich, no. I think, uh, you know, I, as we had spoke about, the, the geotechnical engineer was, was happy with the, the material that was there. We had to add some more moisture onto it for compaction. That's right. Um, but everything has been, everything's been going positive now at this point. We did find the, I, I'm not sure, this is well over a month ago, we found some unknown piping, uh, some drainage piping out in the, the parking lot. We were able to get some, some shots on that. Cataldo, the site contractor, took some camera video uh, in those drainage pipes, and we were able to include it into our infiltrainage, uh, infiltration system that's in the parking lot. So, Okay, uh, good. Go all good on, a, on that standpoint. Great. Hey, Brian, a uh, quick question or two. Uh, Follow-up meetings to the one that we uh, that you hosted? Yep. 
I, I received your email too about the AV consultant as well. I've got that uh, with the with um, both the librarian and the town administrator. You know how they want to engage with that. Uh, the PR or I call it almost a architectural supplementary instruction. The ASI for the floor boxes has been distributed to them and we'll be scheduling something soon about kind of now we're out of the slab now we're going to talk about uh things on the wall and and coordination that way so we'll get something coordinated uh with you and and, and nancy i know nancy didn't have too much input but now i think it's a good time to to get her involved as well so yeah um yeah the uh you're familiar with the uh the vendor the sub that i was referring to they did the work up at the fire station i think Correct. you found them pretty easy to work with yep yeah. Uh, would, would, would we be using them as the conduit to, to buy like monitors and screens too? Is that? Well, that's, that's all part of the conversation. Uh, Brian, yes, I would hope so. Yeah. Um, they're on the state bid list. Um, but I would like to be able to kill a couple of birds with one stone by getting them in and helping, you know, them guide the, uh, the library trustees and Sam um, on some of the details because they're going to be putting up a lot of monitors and there's an opportunity for digital signage that once you walk in that front door, they're going to want to start showing community bulletin board stuff or activities and actions that are happening in that place. So it's just like, you know, again, let's get the conversations going. That's yeah, definitely. And the early we get them going and we know locations of things, then we can direct the contractor to have proper in-wall blocking to make sure that everything is secure. So. Thank you. And that's the thing I was trying to make certain because these aren't going to be small monitors that are going up, no. Brian. Right. right. Thank you. Yeah. Plus power that goes along with them. Mm. A little details. Yeah. And communication lines. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Anything else on library? Uh, yeah. I, I heard a rumor that uh, um, I don't know where it was from, but that there was a problem with um, coordinating penetrations in the concrete that there were the some of the foundations went in without uh, um, penetrations for plumbing and wiring and stuff and I hope that's none of that's true um, yeah not to my knowledge that the they've, they've coordinated their sleeves with the general contractor um, I've been on jobs and, I, and I'll find out tomorrow if there is any of this what happens is they engage with the structural engineer if any coring needs to happen through the foundation there is a, uh, a strict process that needs to happen. Uh, right. So that would go through uh, our structural engineer of record. But as of now, all sleeves have been done by the, the subcontractors to get into the building. I, 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 I saw all the sleeves on, galvanized sleeves on site. Right. Um, there should be minimal uh, foundation penetration anyway. Correct. So. Right. Okay, thank you. You're All right, welcome. moving on to the library, Brian. You want to tell us about our meeting last week with the chief and the, uh, you know, Rich and uh, the uh, contractor. Sure. So we met last week uh, at the police station um, with the waterproofing company's project manager and their field operations manager, as well as CVI, the designer, uh, the chief, and Steve. Um, to have kind of an informal kickoff meeting to go over some of the, the rules that the town has and to go over schedule. It was brought up to them, uh, brought up to us by the, by the waterproofing company that they weren't comfortable about some of the lead times that they're seeing, especially for decorative concrete block. Uh, they're seeing lead times um, possibly because of COVID um, and, and they're seeing quite a backup, but they're seeing lead times of over eight weeks. So if you just do the simple math on the calendar, that's pushing us into a spot that we feel very uncomfortable with um, using mortar and uh, other masonry units in a winter condition, because that's why we're in this position in the first place. So uh, we collectively made a, a decision as a team to proceed with continuing with submittals, uh, schedule, um, preliminary schedule putting together, uh, as well as... Um, you know, getting us to a point where once the winter is over and we see a stretch of spring, we can kick off with the with the ball rolling uh, material on site, ready to go, and we can uh, give them the uh, notice to proceed at that point, uh, kicking off the 72-day uh, construction schedule. Um, while it's probably not ideal, it's not being done this fall. It might behoove the town where. 
Uh, we'll see where we stand on the remaining scope if the town has the appetite for going for that remaining scope of the project. Um, you know, there, there's a chance that it could stay with the same contractor and we could see uh, the entire scope of project being done in the spring. And that would afford us all the material being bought by the same contractor. It would be the same batch of material. There would be no color variations. Um, there'd be some economy of savings with MOB and DMOB. Uh, but, you know, that that's all contingent upon town meeting voting for the additional funds, uh, <clears throat> putting the uh, phase two out for a bid and, you know, finding out if uh, the current contractor was uh, competitive enough to uh, get phase two. Yeah, and I... I I was a little at first disappointed that we weren't going to be able to get it done. You know, I was impressed with their, with their team that they brought to, um, yeah. you know, it seemed as though they were invested in making sure that they got the job done correctly rather than just slamming it in right now in the fall uh, and, and maybe just, you know, creating the same problems uh, that they're trying to remedy right now. So, yeah. and they had a good approach how they were going to bring in this uh, special piece of equipment so that they didn't have to scaffold the entire building that they were going to protect the grass. Uh, the chief seemed, uh, you know, pleased with the uh, presentation. And uh, I think we were also. Yep. So we'll be working a little behind the scenes, just making sure uh, uh, submittals and schedules are taking place. Um, but for the time being, that the actual construction will be shelved until, mm -hmm. until the weather breaks next year. We're going to have the material on, on site uh, this year right away or no no what what i foresee probably happening is we have the submittal that's approved and we stay in constant communication with the contractor so that when we get a, a rough idea when we're going to be starting construction there they're ordering their materials you know whether it's six weeks in advance um so that it's it's there when they begin but um you know, it, it, we won't be dropping anything off and, and leaving it in the police department while um, no one's on site. Are we going to be looking at added cost down the road? No. 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 no what we'll do is what we'll do is we'll we'll issue a a change order, but it's a no cost change, uh, and all that is is just extending the contract time to once they begin work. Then we do the seventy two days on top of that. Great. That's a very good solution to that problem. It appeared to be. It yeah. seemed to be the only solution. Uh, anything else on police station? Uh, town hall. Uh, <clears throat> I think, uh, Brian, you, you, you are the only one that with any information on the call here. Yeah. I also, just before we met with the police, we ran up to the third floor and met with uh, Ed Mullen and Cheryl uh, in regards to some of the CARES Act money that they're looking to expend. Um, so I dragged the the architect or the <clears throat> consultant that we're using at the police station because he said he does have some experience in doing some of these renovations. And we brought him upstairs and got him some plans um, with the knowledge that what we were told from Cheryl and Joseph Layden that we have till the end of the year to actually spend this money. So Arno from CBI is putting together something as quick as possible. He's hoping to have something to me tomorrow morning, which will encompass the small amount of design fees it would take to do these remodeling on the second and third floor. Um, and if we're not sure what, if you guys don't know what the scope is, it ultimately is just a, um, a hallway transaction counter and reconfiguring some of the offices um, to comply with some of the social distancing and, and to keep um, patrons a certain distance away in these offices. Um, I did have a talk with Arno, his concern about some certain things that we've seen in the police station that we're having some long lead times. Um, he wants to get, he wants to get this done and squared away as soon as possible so that we can at least go out to bid and, and see where we stand um, because we're not, as it is right now, we're not giving the contractor a lot of time to get this work done. Brian, does that also include any work that's being done in room 307, or is this, again, just the all the COVID-related work? 
as far as I know, it's uh, it's it has to be all COVID related work, and it needs to be approved by a certain state legislature to to actually deem that it is in fact COVID work. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Uh, member input, Rich. Uh, if you if you figure it out where you are, can you tell us? <laughs> um, well, calling from someplace in the middle of Florida, in some green area here. Um, I have no further input. Okay. Thank you, uh, <laughs> Bartlett. No other input. Uh, Bob Romley. I'm all set. Tamlin. No, I'm all set. Thanks. Okay. Hey, um, Brian? Just uh, in future meetings, uh, I get some invoices throughout the month that I need to send to you, Steve. Do you want me to send just directly to you? I know I understand that the testing invoices are all set. Um, Johnson Roberts was a little slow getting me the requisition for Commodore right. for August. So if that's the case, it looks like their August rec will not be paid for another you know, week and a half or however it goes from at this point, or maybe even two weeks. So, Well, our next meeting is uh, October 14th, so it won't get paid until, you know, maybe a week or 10 days after that, maybe the end of October. Okay. So we'll probably have two, uh, two Commodore invoices on the next warrant. I anticipate getting that pencil rec within the next couple of days. Yeah. Okay. So. And then, uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't need to see it before Johnson and Roberts, okay. ex except to, uh, if maybe if you send it over and just copy me so I know it's in their court, I can kind yep. of put it on my radar screen. Yep. Okay. That's great. Thanks. Kirby, any, uh, any other comments? Um, I have no comments. Steve Moore has no comments. So uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Uh, so moved. Who, who said that? The, the, uh, the lost Floridian. Oh. <laughs> Richard Crowley. Rich Crowley moved. Okay. Is there a second? Bob Romney seconds it. Okay. All in favor? Bob Romney, yes. Rich Crowley, yes. Bartlett, yes. Emily Rossi, yes, yes. Steve Moore, yes. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. And we'll see you on October 14th. Great. Have Have a care. Bye, guys. Yeah. Have a good night. Good night.